Terrifying Auroras, presented by Science at NASA. Last month, a cloud of plasma from the sun hit Earth's magnetic field and sent northern lights spilling across the Canadian border. In the United States, stunned onlookers saw blood-red auroras as far south as Alabama, Georgia, and Texas. For many skywatchers, it was a once-in-a-lifetime event. On the planet called Koru 2b, it could happen almost every night. Located about 880 light-years from Earth, the gas giant is routinely blasted with X-ray solar flares 100,000 times stronger than anything we experience on Earth. Moreover, the battered planet orbits its star 97% closer than Earth orbits the Sun. When it gets hit by clouds of plasma, or coronal mass ejections, at such close range, the results could be as beautiful as they are terrifying. Cora 2b probably has auroras visible at all latitudes, even in the planet's deep south, says Scott Wolk of the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory at Harvard. Wolk simulates what systems like these could experience, using data from NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. The lights would be beautiful to see, he speculates. That is, for the few seconds a human could survive there. Solar flares from the parent star are so powerful, they actually blast away some of the planet's atmosphere. About 5 million tons of matter every second, Wolk says. This could endow Cora 2b with a long, comet-like tail whipping through the auroral glow. No one knows for sure, however, because the planet is so far away. Despite its tremendous mass loss, the planet is in no immediate danger of evaporating. Cora 2b is losing about 150 million billion kilograms per year. That sounds like a lot but it is just a drop in the bucket to a planet more massive than Jupiter. It could sustain such erosion for thousands of billions of years. Cora 2b gets its strange name from the spacecraft that found it, the French Space Agency's Convection, Rotation, and Planetary Transit Satellite, Cora for short. A group of astronomers led by Sebastian Schroeder of the University of Hamburg in Germany recently conducted a detailed study of the Cora system using Chandra and the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope. The results suggest that Cora 2b has a hand in some of its own troubles. The planet, in part, causes the flares. Wolk explains, Cora 2b orbits at breakneck speed, making a complete circuit around its parent star in only 1.7 days. Because the planet and star are linked by strong tidal forces, the headlong rush of the planet speeds up the star causing it to rotate faster than it otherwise would. The spinning of plasma inside a rapidly rotating star creates a more active magnetic dynamo, which in turn gives rise to the magnetic fields that create sunspots and flares. By spinning up the star, Cora 2b sets the stage for flares in general, but it doesn't stop there. By rapidly plowing through the star's magnetic field, Cora 2b probably sets off specific magnetic instabilities that cause flares as the planet passes by. Cora 2b is literally sealing its own fate. Maybe living in a place where auroras are mostly confined to the poles isn't such a bad thing after all. For more information about planets, beautiful and terrifying, visit science.nasa.gov. The Great Lakes of Europa, presented by Science at NASA. At first glance, the icy surface of Jupiter's moon Europa appears to be a frozen wasteland, a deep freeze where nothing changes and no life could survive. But researchers have long known there's more to Europa than meets the eye. In the 1990s and early 2000s, NASA's Galileo probe swooped low over Europa's icy landscape. Close-up pictures revealed a geologically young surface and unusual formations in the ice. Grooved ridges and crustal plates looked like they had broken apart and rafted into new positions floating on subsurface water or slush. Similar ice patterns are found in the Earth's own Arctic. Indeed, it is now widely believed that Europa harbors a vast ocean beneath its frozen exterior. The ocean is deep enough to cover the whole surface of Europa and, according to some estimates, contains more liquid water than all of Earth's oceans combined. However, being so far from the sun, Europa's surface is completely frozen, with a crust some tens of miles thick. 
this begs the question, could such a closed off environment be a habitat for life? New research just published in the journal Nature suggests that Europa might not be so closed off after all. Galileo's mission came to an end in 2003 when the probe was plunged intentionally into Jupiter's atmosphere, but researchers continue to study the treasure trove of data Galileo beamed back to Earth. A group led by Brittany Schmidt, a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Texas Institute for Geophysics, focused on Europa's chaos terrain, circular bumpy features on Europa's surface that had long intrigued researchers. It turns out that similar terrains are found on Earth, on ice shelves, and under glaciers overlaying volcanoes. Based on what is known of Earth, Schmidt's team developed a four-step model to explain how Europa's chaos features form. I read the paper and immediately thought, yes, that's it, that makes sense, said Robert Papillardo, senior research scientist of the Planetary Science Section at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, who did not participate in the study. It's the only convincing model that fits the full range of observations. According to the analysis, one of the chaos terrains apparently overlies a body of liquid the area of the North American Great Lakes. Moreover, the authors believe that ice shelves on top of the lake are collapsing, providing a way to transfer nutrients and energy between the surface and Europa's vast underground ocean. We see evidence that even though Europa's ice shelf is thick, it can mix vigorously, says Schmidt. That could make Europa and its ocean more habitable. Given the number of chaos terrains on Europa's surface, many more such lakes might exist. The data opens up some compelling possibilities, agrees Mary Wojtek, director of NASA's astrobiology program. However, she cautions, scientists worldwide will want to take a close look at this analysis and review the data before we can fully appreciate the implication of these results. Final proof might require a trip to Europa by a spacecraft designed to probe the icy shell. Such a mission is being studied by NASA. For more hot news from cold places, visit science. .nasa.gov A supersized lunar eclipse presented by Science at NASA Waking up before sunrise can be tough to do, especially on a weekend. On Saturday, December 10th, many of us will be glad that we did. A total eclipse of the moon will be visible in the early morning skies of western northern America. The action begins around 4.45 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, when the red shadow of Earth falls across the lunar disk. By 6.05 a.m. Pacific Time, the Moon will be fully engulfed in red light. This event, the last total lunar eclipse until 2014, is visible from the Pacific side of North America, across the entire Pacific Ocean to Asia and Eastern Europe. For people in the western United States, the eclipse is deepest just before local dawn face west to see the red moon sinking into the horizon as the sun rises behind your back. It's a rare way to begin the day. Not only will the moon be beautifully red, it will also be inflated by the moon illusion. For reasons not fully understood by astronomers or psychologists, low-hanging moons look unnaturally large when they beam through trees, buildings, and other foreground objects. In fact, a low moon is no wider than any other moon cameras prove it. But the human brain insists otherwise. To observers in the western United States, the eclipse will appear supersized. It might seem puzzling that the moon turns red when it enters the shadow of the Earth. Aren't shadows supposed to be dark? In this case, the delicate layer of dusty air surrounding our planet reddens and redirects the light of the sun, filling the dark behind Earth with a sunset red glow. The exact hue Anything from bright orange to blood red is possible. Depends on the unpredictable state of the atmosphere at the time of the eclipse. As Jack Horkheimer of the Miami Space Transit Planetarium loved to say, only the shadow knows. Atmospheric scientist Richard Keane of the University of Colorado might know too. For years he has studied lunar eclipses as a means of monitoring conditions in Earth's upper atmosphere, and he has become skilled at forecasting these events. I expect this eclipse to be bright red with a possible hint of turquoise at the edge, he predicts. Earth's stratosphere is the key. During a lunar eclipse, most of the light illuminating the moon passes through the stratosphere where it is reddened by scattering, he explains. 
If the stratosphere is loaded with dust from volcanic eruptions, the eclipse would be dark. A clear stratosphere, on the other hand, produces a brighter eclipse. At the moment, the stratosphere is mostly clear, with little input from recent volcanoes. That explains the brightness of the eclipse. But what about the hint of turquoise? Light passing through the upper atmosphere penetrates the ozone layer, which absorbs red light and actually makes the passing light ray bluer. This can be seen as a soft blue fringe around the red core of Earth's shadow. Look for the turquoise near the beginning of the eclipse when the edge of Earth's shadow is sweeping across the lunar terrain, he advises. A bright red, soft turquoise, supersized lunar eclipse. It's coming on Saturday, December 10th. Wake up and enjoy the show. For more news about eye-opening events in the night sky, visit science.nasa.gov.